Hello, everyone. Welcome to Verbling. Hi there. I'm Teacher Oakley. For the next hour, we are going to do uh, different types of exercises. Uh, the basic goal is really simple, straightforward reading comprehension. We're going to read very short, little paragraph-long stories. Uh, which will have some challenging vocabulary, possibly an idiom or two, uh, which we'll be discussing. And uh, the idea is to get to understand the idea of the story. What's challenging with this little group of stories I have today, uh, they're, they're a little bit humorous, so they involve wordplay, or perhaps cultural references, or other things that will make it a, a little bit more challenging for, uh, for you guys to, to figure out. But uh, anyway, I'll help you uh, along, and uh, we'll talk about this, read the stories, look at the vocabulary, and talk about what is funny about the stories. These are humorous stories. so. Understanding the point will under be um, it will be necessary to understand why the story is funny. Okay, hello Heidi. Hello. Again. Nice to see you again. Hello, hello. Uh, and also welcome to the class, Jose. Hello, teacher. How are you? Oh, I'm doing okay. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Without further ado, I suppose, let's let's get started. There's plenty of room in the class. Any of viewers out there in Verbling, come on in. You can join the class anytime. It really doesn't make any difference. Please join us. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start here. Uh, first of all, the story, and then we'll look at vocabulary. Heidi, can you read the story? For us, that's it. Just a couple sentences, really. Four, My three. Friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> a young housewife told me, "My husband and I never argue, no matter how ang angry uh, we may be. Instead, we sit down and uh, r rationally uh, discuss both sides of the dispute." Then I make a list of all the uh, crockery uh, I intend to smash. Okay, very Crocker. good. Crockery. Yeah, crockery, crockery. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so we're going to talk about crockery in just a second. Uh, Jose, all right, let's talk about the vocabulary a little bit, and then we'll talk about what the story means. Jose? Rash, whoops, rationally means, I'll give you choices, rationally, uh -huh. what, silently, angrily, not foolishly, very quickly, which is closest? I, I'm not sure, but I think uh, not, not foolishly. Not foolishly? Okay, that's a good guess. All right, let's take a look. Let's see if that fits. Uh, instead, we sit down and not foolishly discuss both sides of the dispute. Yeah, that, that basically works, Jose. Okay, rational, okay, means without uh, the influence of emotions. If you make a decision emotionally when you're upset, or when you're angry, okay, then that's probably not a good thing. So not foolishly. Mm, a, um, better, um. a better answer would be unemotionally and logically. Uh -huh. Yeah. But, okay, the opposite, not foolishly. Uh, okay. Hmm. Uh, Saif has I'll joined us. Come on silently. Silently? Yeah. Not, not necessarily. I mean, it may be a factor. Um, 
No, uh, they, they, and besides, it's used, the adverb is used for discuss, so it'd be kind of difficult to silently discuss <laughs> something, right? <laughs> of course. But, but the meaning is like calm down, uh, or mm -hmm. yeah. the, theoretically, right? Logically, right. And logically, using your intelligence, not using your emotion, is the mm -hmm. idea. So I thought I'm uh, quite <laughs> Oh, well, none of the answers really is as good as I might like them to be, but I, I think Jose did a pretty good job. Uh, next, we're going to look at dispute. Uh, hello, Saif. Hello. Hello. Okay, so we're looking at the word dispute here. Uh, instead, we sit down and rationally discuss both sides of the dispute. All right, what does dispute mean here? Sit down and talk about both sides of the dispute. Is dispute a fight, a wife, a list, or a talk? What do you think? I don't know. I don't know. Well, you have a 25% chance. <laughs> if you want to <laughs> guess, take, take a guess. Why not? Can you take a guess? No? Okay. I'll throw it out to the rest of the class. Uh, who else has an idea? S dispute here means what? Letter A. Right. Sorry? Jose? Letter, letter, letter A. Letter fight. A. Fight. Okay, very good. Rationally discuss both sides of the fight. All right. My husband and I never argue, no matter how angry we are. They rationally discuss both sides of the fight. Then I make a list of all the crockery I intend to smash. Heidi, oh, Heidi, are you, Heidi, are you in? Yes, yes I'm sorry. Once uh, it cut oh. off. It's okay. But now, now it's okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay. okay. Ah, crockery means the uh, uh, poetry or um, ceramic. Ceramic. Okay. Ceramic and, uh, cups and plate, plate etc. Right there, you go. Ceramic items. That's right. Exactly. Ceramic items. Various ceramic items in the group: cups, plates, saucers, bowls. Uh, yeah, any of those types of things. Very good, excellent. And uh, May has joined. Hello, May. Hello, teacher. I can never remember. Is it May or Mai? Mai. Mai. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, Mai. Yes. All right. Uh, hello, Mai. How are you? Yes. I'm fine, thanks. How, uh, is, how was that okay? I'm okay. It's Monday, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Looking at the meaning of the here of uh, the word smash, okay? Then I make a list of all the crockery I intend to smash. What does what smash mean here? Okay, my what does smash mean? I make a list smash, of all the uh, like, uh, accident. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> in in this particular sentence, then I make a list of all the crockery I intend to smash. So the speaker intends, so not accidentally. <laughs> Actually, the opposite. Very purposefully, she intends to do what? Drop something and drag it. That's it. So she intends to smash the crockery. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Heidi, back to you. So what is funny about this story? What is the humorous element of this story? Um, they uh, they never had argument, but they have some dispute dispute 
the problems. Sure. Then uh, they discuss about that. It means fight <laughs> argument. <laughs> <laughs> well, pretty much, especially since we have the information here that uh, after yeah. their and rational... Then, uh, if, if they throw the, uh, some ceramic uh, dish or <laughs> some cup or something, so they smash it. It's an argument and a fight. <laughs> right, exactly. Okay. So she's rationally, the funny part is that she's really, he's on the word rationally. They're going to rationally discuss and then she's going to rationally smash the crockery, which of course is an irrational and highly emotional act. Right. Uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the idea. Uh, okay. Heidi, tell me the truth. Have you ever smashed a plate because you're angry? Uh, no, I'm stingy, so I've never <laughs> <laughs> Okay, fair enough. Yeah, fair. actually, I wanted to smash computer sometimes, but oh, me I'm too. because I'm stingy. <laughs> right, I've never done it either, but I've always, I've frequently wanted to pick up my computer and throw it out the window. For some, for me, throwing it out the window. <laughs> would be the idea. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Here's a related proverb. Uh, Jose, this is interesting. What does this mean? Empty vessels make the most noise. Hmm. Whoa. Um, I don't know... Um, what does uh, vessel mean? Okay, uh, vessel it means a container. Uh, any really any kind of container. A vessel can also be. You, you, it can also mean something used to transport uh, something from one place to another. So it can that can mean a container, of course, uh, mm -hmm. or or it can also, a uh, vessel is also another word for a ship, which also we use ships to move things from one place to another. Uh huh. Um, is, is this is a hard one. Um, when, when, you, when you break uh, a, big, a big glass and <laughs> it. it <laughs> Uh, it is it is empty when you when you uh, dispute w uh, with another another people and you you break the the vessel is better than is be uh, is better if this vessel is empty <laughs> because the noise because the the noise is is uh, bigger. Okay. I, I don't I don't know, teacher. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, you're looking at it from a very physical way. Okay, but if we try to think about it in more, uh, of course, proverbs and such are directed towards people, where we talk about, it's a metaphor. So we're talking about how something is like the way people act. Of course. That's a tough one. I, I'm not sure what that means. Does it, uh, anybody else have another idea what this proverb means? Um, for example, a car or a, uh, even a cut or uh, something like that. If, if it's empty, and then um, the, you push the car on the street, it's very noisy. But you put uh, a heavy thing inside, uh, the noise removed. It means uh, people, um, their brains are empty. They are very noisy and they complain a lot. Very but good. Intelligent, intelligent pe a person who or has a, who whose word is very short and small. They don't argue so, too much, but they can uh, uh, do critical hit. <laughs> okay, interesting. All right, very good. Okay, right. All right. These proverbs are metaphorical that have to do with people. So you've got to try to. I don't know, visualize how that proverb 
talks about people. That was pretty good. Uh, that's a pretty good explanation. Okay, let's move on to another story, the wedding gown. Uh, let me quickly say hello to Nader. Hello, Nader. How are you? Thank you. I'm fine. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm going to have Mai read this story. Mai? Yes. I'm going to try this first story, please. Yes, okay. Uh, the story. When my sister got married, she, drove, she wore my mother's wedding dress. The day she tried it on, the gun fitted her exactly, and mother started to cry. So not losing a daughter, I reminded her, putting my arm around her, governing a son. Oh, forget about that, she said with a sock. I used to fit into that dress. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Be, uh, my, be careful with the endings of words like married and dress. Make sure I can dress. try it on. Tried it on. Try it this part again. On. Right. The day she tried it on. Okay. Try and it on. Try so this, this word is gown. Pronunciation. Gown. That's better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what is a gown? Uh, Okay, she tried on the gown. Uh, Nader, what is a gown? Gown is a kind of dress. Sure. Especially a dress which is worn for a special occasion. Right. Wedding gown. All right. A ball gown. You wear to a special fancy, dra uh, fancy dance. Okay. Exactly. Uh, well, this one's Heidi. Obviously, you know this one. To fit means to uh, be the right, right side. Of course. And um, it can be used as a noun or as a verb. Or sometimes we use the expression a fitting. Uh, if you have a fitting, which actually a fitting, which actually kind of matches this story, for example, with your wedding dress, you especially go in and try to, they try to alter the size of the dress in different areas to make it fit the most appropriately. Uh, okay. Uh, Jose, a what is a noisy and irregular breath from crying? Uh, so <laughs> So it's a noise and irregular breath for, for crying. Yeah. So, <laughs> can, you, can you stop, Jose? Do you ever stop? <laughs> <laughs> well, when I was a child. Uh, okay. When you were a child? Sure. Tight. All right. All right. <laughs> of course, we all did when we were children. All right, Mai, um, back to you. Uh, okay. Why... Why is the mother crying? Which I think is the main part of the story. Can you repeat the question? Sure. In this story, which you read, why is the mother sobbing? To sobbing, to sob is a kind of crying. Okay. Uh, and the mother started to cry. Well, it actually says the mother started to cry. Uh, why is the mother cry? Uh, because um, mother uh, uh, she, she told us she would um, she, uh, she is going to lose her daughter. Right, but is that that's what the it seems like she's crying about? At first, it seems like she's crying because her daughter's getting married. Okay, but the reason this is a funny story is because there's another. The real reason is uh, maybe yeah, uh, she uh, she can weigh the weigh the gun. That's right. The gown doesn't fit anymore. 
She's crying because she's gained weight, and now the gown does not fit her anymore. Right? <laughs> exactly. Okay. Uh, my, is, is it a tra tradition in your culture for the mother to give the daughter the wedding dress? Does that ever happen? No. Um, no. We, we, we go to the wedding um, uh, wedding store and uh, hire a wedding dress to mm -hmm. wear in the wedding day. Okay. Uh, we don't buy, we easily don't buy a wedding dress because it's expensive and um, furthermore, uh, we don't use it often. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, of course not often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Well, I think in American culture, everyone buys their dress, but sometimes the mother, or even sometimes occasionally grandmother, will uh, sort of pass on the dress. They will give the dress to uh, the daughter or the daughter's daughter to wear for a wedding. Nader, does that ever happen in? In your culture, the no, everyone um, has to buy new dress. Everyone has their own. And do women keep their their wedding dress like forever, you know, in the plates of honor, make sure it doesn't get damaged? <laughs> I guess they keep it uh, because they cannot sell it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, they can't sell it. Not for sentimental reasons. No, but I don't think so. Okay. Uh, okay. And yeah, well, all right. Definitely, my culture, in American culture, they keep it for very sentimental reasons, as a, a keepsake, something you, you keep to remember, a special time, a keepsake, or a memento. Okay, of that wonderful day. <laughs> All right. Okay, I wonder if this one has a... Uh, okay. Okay. Anyway, this one has a, a Russian proverb, but it doesn't really, I don't know if it makes, oh, okay, well, worth looking at. Uh, Heidi, what do you think this proverb means? One rotten egg spoils 20 fresh ones. Uh, I'm not sure, but maybe egg, uh, what's the, uh, became a new uh, chicken, chicken will. <laughs> Over uh, uh, produce uh, over a uh, twenty fresh eggs. Okay, so if you uh, rot the egg, uh, if you broke break the egg, it means you uh, lost twenty fresh uh, eggs. <laughs> uh, okay, well that's that's sort of the physical idea, but how does this uh, work for people? Actually, we in English we have a very similar proverb. Uh, um, one bad apple uh -huh. uh, spoils the. I forget what the collective noun should be. The bunch, the bushel, the basket, something, uh, something oh, like that. I can't you remember. Can, you say uh, orange. Orange? Yes. Really? Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I guess in Russia it's an egg. In American, it's an apple. And in, in, in fact, sometimes we we would say, "Oh, he's the bad apple in the family." Oh, I I don't know why we hired him. I think he's a bad apple, mm -hmm. meaning that he will infect other people. Like one bad apple in the workplace, he'll. He'll start spreading rumors and say bad things about the office, the administration. He'll start a lot of trouble. That's the idea. So it's in orange. Jose, what is it in your culture? Do you have a similar proverb? Yeah, it's, it's similar to England. To England, uh, say in Spain, um, we we say apple. You also say apple. Apple. Uh, Okay. Apple. Uh -huh. Eggs, apples, mm. oranges. Nader, do you have any kind of similar? Yes, expression? we have the same. We have the same proof. 
with sometimes apples. we say apple, sometimes we say uh, uh, tomato. Tomato. <laughs> That's great. All right. Well, I guess they all work. Uh, okay. Interesting. Uh, okay. Let's try another wedding story later. <laughs> wedding gifts. All right. More wedding stuff. Uh, Jose, I'm going to have you read this one. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jack and his wife were opening their wedding gift. After unwrapping each uh, package, Lisa would exclaim enthusiastically, uh, we really need these towels, or well, well enjoy eating of these pretty plates. Then she, she opened on very large box. It contained a vacuum, a vacuum cleaner. Jack, uh, Lisa said, "Look uh, what you are got. You you have got. What a look! What, what you've you got. got. Don't don't be shy to pronounce the um, contraction. All right, you. It sounds like you've this. Got. You, you've got. Uh -huh. That's good. That's it. You've very got. Good. All right. Uh -huh. Thank you, teacher. Sure. A couple other words. A little bit of a, not a huge problem, but a little problem. Uh, package. Be careful. Be careful not to say package G. Okay. Uh, package. Pa pa package. Right. Package. Okay. Yes. There's a couple languages where the G sound has a vowel after it. Korean, Spanish, and uh, I don't know. Anyway, package. Uh, and then this big, giant, long word. Enthusiastically. Enthusiastically. That's good. That's good. Enthusiastically. Notice, notice how I don't really pronounce this a in kali. Enthusiastic kali. I don't do that. I, it just sounds like kli. This is very n normal. This is a common suffix or ending of words, not especially. Uh, Shelly. Uh, okay. Well, anyway, uh, this is a common suffix, and usually we reduce it. We just don't pronounce the A sound. It just sounds like cle. Uh, okay. Another wedding story. Uh, all right. Make sure we understand uh, all the words. So, my, to unwrap. Uh, it means open. It means open. Yes, it certainly does. Very soon. Uh, Mai, do you celebrate Christmas? What? Do you celebrate Christmas at all? Um, in fact, um, it's not the op uh, official, official day, but um, for Zhang so people, we, uh, yes, we celebrate. Okay. And do you exchange gifts? Do you give each other presents? Yes, to my children. Your children, okay. So they'll be they'll be unwrapping gifts, unwrapping presents on Christmas. <laughs> Christmas Day, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. My kids too. Uh, okay, how about uh, Nidia, how about package in this package it means person? Parcel. Yeah, parcel is a little bit more formal. All right. After unwrapping, okay, opening each package, parcel. Okay. Shipment. Yeah, it could be. Uh, of course, in this case, you know, at, at a wedding, they're wrapped in colorful paper, pretty paper and ribbons like that. It's a package. Parcel, okay, if you're shipping a parcel. You're, I don't know, buying shoes online or something. Obviously, it's not going to be wrapped in pretty paper. <laughs> it's a brown, plain brown paper or just in a box. But it's, okay, it's a package, it's a parcel, right. Okay, Heidi, uh, enthusiastic means? A legacy with great interest. With great interest, very excited. If you're enthusiastic about something, you're excited about it, you're interested. 
Actually, really two things, excited and interested both at the same time. Uh, okay, and uh, Jose, back to you. Another word for vacuum cleaner. Um, vacuum cleaner is... Um, ah, this is a tricky one. Cleaning, cleaning machine? Well, come on. It's really, really, really close. Uh, British, in particular, call it this. I, I've actually heard Americans use it, too, really. Um, well, here's a case where the answer is actually C, Hoover. Now, Hoover is a vacuum cleaner maker. It is a brand name of vacuum cleaner. But this is a case where English speakers... On occasion, English speakers take a brand name and use it to describe that that particular thing. Americans, for example, use Pampers to talk about disposable diapers. It's very normal. I'll, I need to run to the store and get some Pampers. Okay, uh, the kind of diapers that you can throw away. Diapers for babies. Um, okay. Anyway, British people more often call it a Hoover. Americans very rarely, but I have heard it. And you're right. What is it? It is a cleaning machine. That's correct. It sucks up the dirt from the floor. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. We do right. the same here. Do you? We say, you say Pepsi Hoover? for soda for any kind uh, of soda. Yeah. yeah. We say Ariel for any kind of detergent. Okay. Now, it's funny, you say Pepsi, and then uh, many Americans might say Coke, which is always very funny. Uh, <laughs> you, it's ridiculous when you're in a restaurant, uh, and I'll, I'll have a cheeseburger, fries, and uh, give me a large Coke. They'll say, oh, we don't have Coke, sir. We have Pepsi. Yeah, fine, whatever. That's, that, that conversation happens like a million times every day in the United States, the same exact conversation. No, it's kind of funny, but because they have to be specific because they're selling you the item, but the speaker asking for a Coke just wants a soda. They don't really care what it is. Uh, okay. Jose, I haven't given you a chance to tell why the story is funny. Why is this story funny? What, what's funny about this story? Um... Um, people, people have uh, given given us um, things. Um, they they could use both, but the uh, vacuum cleaner, I I, I think um, uh, only only could uh, use uh, the girl. Well, actually, the guy. Lisa. Lisa. Or, 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 yeah. Because she tells her new husband, Jack and his bride, Lisa is the ah. bride. She tells ah, okay, Jack, okay. <laughs> yeah. Right, so that's exactly right. The humorous part is the use of pronouns. Oh, we really need this. Mm -hmm. We'll enjoy this. And then the vacuum cleaner. Oh, this uh -huh. is for you. <laughs> I've noticed this before, Jose, with when my kids do something wrong, my wife always said, look what your kids have done. <laughs> why, why are they suddenly my kids? <laughs> this is look for you. The, look at the mess your children have made. What are you going to do about that? What? Why is it suddenly my children? Okay, this, <laughs> this happens to me all the time. Uh... Selective use of pronouns. Um, okay. Jose, in your culture, is it normal to give a, a, a wedding couple gifts? Um, no, it's, it's more common uh, to, give, to give money. Money, really? That's cool. Yes. All right. Yes. Well, new bride and groom certainly need money. That's for certain. Uh, mm. Right. Yeah, in a, okay, in English culture, sometimes they do that. Sometimes they don't, not always, but sometimes they do money, and they, in a wedding, and it's called a money tree. In case you guys ever go to a 
Western wedding. And somebody say, is the money trees over there? <laughs> what that is, it's actually something maybe artistically like a tree. Maybe it's an actual physical tree. And anyway, you, uh, you clip little envelopes with money onto the tree. You actually have an envelope with money on it and maybe, um, maybe a card, uh, an envelope with a card in it best wishes card, something like that, congratulations, and you put money in it. So um, usually somebody in the family, somebody tells you there's going to be a money tree, so you know that you have to prepare an envelope. Hmm. But anyway, in case you go to such a wedding and somebody says the money tree's over there by the window, that doesn't hmm. mean you go over there and take some money, okay? <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to... Leave some money, okay. Uh, okay. Um, let's see if this one comes with a. Hey, the proverbs don't always match this story. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, Nate Air, here we go. Cut your coat according to your cloth. Hmm. What does that mean? I would I would use the the proverb uh, money doesn't. Money doesn't grow, uh, grow on trees. <laughs> okay. All right. That is a proverb. Money doesn't grow on trees. Okay. Meaning, the meaning, so, you have to work for it, but okay. Here, uh, cut your yeah. coat according to your clothes. Uh, I guess we have a similar proverb, uh -huh. like uh, stretch your uh, quilt uh, uh, as, per the, as per your height. It means that you Same don't spend thing. too much. Don't spend too much. Something like this. Uh, go according to your, uh, to your, uh, like sources or. Oh, you know, okay. If you if you earn like one thousand, don't spend like one thousand two hundred. Ah, uh, I see. Okay. All right. I don't really so know. So use your use your sources uh, uh, wisely. Okay. Is the moral. Proverbs, now I, each of these stories has a little proverb. Proverbs are supposed to teach us something. Okay, so there you go. All right. Don't bite off more than you can chew. I guess that's not really the same thing. Um, kind of, but not really. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, there you go. Here's another story. Uh Bigger replacement. I, uh, Nate Air, I guess it's your turn to read a story. A short one for you. Go ahead. Bigger replacement is a story. The doorbell rang and the housewife answered it. She found two beggars outside. So you're begging in, two, in twos now? She exclaimed. No, only for today. One of them replied. I'm showing my replacement the, the robes before going on holiday. Okay. Showing my replacement the ropes. Okay, let's look at a little vocabulary here. Uh, Heidi, uh, what is a beggar? A beggar is a ask money. <laughs> ask for money. Right, yeah. right. A uh, person who asks for money. Okay. Uh, do you encounter encounter beggars, Heidi? In Japan, I've never uh, seen some beggars, but I travel in uh, European countries or even America. I I met a lot of beggars. Yeah. I was surprised. <laughs> yeah. Anywhere. They exist in, in many, in the many station or In the train or on the street. No. <laughs> anywhere. Especially in the train stations and bus stations, but there and also anywhere on the street, you never uh, know. And even in uh, Philippines. Uh, there are many beggars. Even what? In the Philippines. Oh, Philippines. in the Philippines? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Uh, female or uh, kids. Yeah, right. That's part of the uniform is they have a little baby. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, this is true. They they actually the little baby or the small child they'll they'll trade the baby. The baby works all day, but the beggar just goes and begs for two hours, and then they'll give the baby to somebody else, and they'll go back for two hours with the baby, with the same baby, pretending it's their child. Yeah, then yeah. 
My friend. The, the baby okay. works harder than the beggar. In other words, my What's friend, that? you shouldn't give money to the kids because behind the kids there are some syndicate. They yeah. gather the money from from kids. That's, I I do believe that that is true in some cases. Uh, there were some beggar kids that used to kind of collect in a shortcut to my house in an alleyway that I, it was just a shortcut and it's a lot faster for me to get to the supermarket. So anyway, I used to take the shortcut and sometimes I would see the beggar kids, I am so sorry, but they're counting out thousands of pesos. They're counting out more money than I make in a day. I don't give them anything. Why should I? Well, um, they make a lot of money. It's really quite impressive. They make good money. I actually saw statistics in the United States. Uh, a beggar in the United States makes approximately $35 an hour. That's an average. That's not a high. That's an average. <laughs> what the heck, I guess. That's, that's a pretty decent wage, even for the United States. That's, that's extremely good. If you consider that minimum wage is like $7.50, Thirty-five dollars an hour, four to five times more money for begging. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well. Some beggars are very rich because you know. they don't need to uh, pay tax. Right. Well, and that, and there's that. Obviously, they're not paying tax. They they don't give receipts. <laughs> okay. Anyway, let's continue with our story, Jose. Jose to exclaim. What does that mean? Where's that here? She exclaimed. The quote. To, 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 um, to say some things um, kindly. No. No, no. not quite. You're half right. To say something, but to say something suddenly and loudly. Oh my goodness! I exclaimed. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. that. Okay. Right. Suddenly and loudly, not necessarily kindly. Uh -huh. um, right. We don't. If you exclaim, it just means sudden and loud. It's neutral whether it's good or bad or meant meant in a positive way or a negative way. It's just really kind of neutral. Depends uh -huh. what they're saying, of course. Uh, okay. Uh, my, a yes. something is a person that put that you put in place of yourself or another. Hmm. Uh, a replacement. Uh, oh, a replacement. Very good. There it is. Okay. <laughs> you put in place of yourself or another. Or a, re a replacement can be a person, okay, that replaces another at some kind of job. Uh, or, in fact, a replacement, of course, could be a part. Obviously, your your car needs replacement parts from time to time. You you put new parts in for the old ones that are broken. It's a replacement part, right? Okay. Uh, ropes here. Okay. What does ropes mean? Uh, again, uh, Nader. Uh, I'm showing my replacement the ropes. I guess you taught this uh, two days ago, but I wasn't there. <laughs> but anyway, I guess uh, maybe customers or clients, maybe. Uh, okay. Um, you're showing People somebody you probably your ropes. Maybe um, the rules and customs in a place or a place. Yeah, that's a lot closer, I think. Uh, the rules and customs in a place or activity. Or you're showing somebody the ropes. You're all right. Maybe you're actually helping them to learn a skill. Okay. If you learn the ropes, maybe you're also not just what happens, but maybe you actually have to learn a skill in order to do it. Uh, okay. But uh, in this context, it means uh, prospects me. In this context. Uh, uh, yeah, how it's done, basically. I'm showing my replacement just how it's done. <laughs> As another way to say it, most commonly in English. Uh, yeah, when 
usually you start a new job and it's very common to hear this expression at that time. Um, go with Bobby. Bobby's going to show you the ropes for today. You're just going to follow Bobby. He'll show you the ropes. He'll help you learn the ropes. Uh, just basically how things are done. Um, and that may or may not involve learning a skill or maybe just uh, as it says here, the customs, how things are normally carried out. Uh, okay, Nader, uh, what, what is the funny thing about this story? They're talking about beggar's life, right? Uh, I think... Uh, so it's, yes, uh, because it's uh, like a job. When you travel, you have to teach your yes man. Right, like it's a, an official real like, job. Uh, he's uh, telling him these are prospects, these are good customers. Right, exactly. He's he's treating a he's treating the job like a regular nine to five white collar <laughs> kind <laughs> of a job. That's exactly right. It's quite professional when uh, interview Simpson. another replacement. That's right. Okay, like uh, like they're gonna have interviews and uh, <laughs> right. Uh, Teacher, oh. did you know that uh, that uh, there is a baking village in Vietnam? Uh, people live in that village. Uh, are all baker. Uh, they go to anywhere in the country to be a baker. Then they bring money to. Um, come to their uh, hometown and uh, build a house, a big house. They don't have, um, they, they are not a poor person. Right, okay, so yeah. there's a, a town where uh, it is a beggar's town. Don't, don't forget your, the S on the end Beggar of the word. Beggar's town. Beggar's. Beggar's town. That's Beggar's. it. Okay, so then they spread out, they live in that town, and then they go to work <laughs> in other places, and yes. then uh, once they have some money, they come back, and uh, they live in nice houses. Is that right? So, okay, I've heard this, this exists. This is the first time I really, it's very usually kind of undercover, but you could call what Mai describes, you could call that a beggar's guild. All right, a guild is like um, a semi-organized group of people with the same skill. So you could have a beggar's guild. You could have, let's see, a craftsman's guild. Uh, it's kind of like a forerunner of the whole idea of organized labor. Okay, um, basically in the old, old, old times. They were semi-organized. Um, Shipbuilders Guild, a Beggars Guild, like that, uh, so that they could uh, protect themselves. So I've heard of that before. I, I've heard of Beggars Guild. I've also heard of a Thieves Guild, um, like thieves who steal things, having a guild. But I, I've never uh, heard it really so clearly put. Uh, okay. Uh, Heidi, let's take a look at this proverb. A man is known by the company he keeps. Hmm. Okay. Well, all right. Indeed. Uh, okay. What, what is that, the meaning of this proverb? It's very difficult. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, maybe, uh, um, People can understand where you are walking. Ah, okay. Now I have to make something clear here. The company he keeps, and here a company does not mean like a business, a manufacturer, or anything like that. Okay, okay. Like um, what the the feather of the bird together together <laughs> like that. <laughs> That's it. Well, yeah. Okay, you're right. Very much related. Birds of a feather flock together. Ah, oh, yes, flock together. <laughs> That's it. 
yeah, very, very much related. That's right. Okay, you tend to hang out. You tend to be with, be around the same kind of people that are like you. So if you want to uh, know a man, know, get to know his friends, and you can learn a lot about what he's really like. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, probably got time for one more here. To do a separate screen share, that's okay. Uh, hang on. Okay. Hang on. Heidi, I guess it's back to you for reading the story. Ooh, it's a long one. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple paragraphs. I'll let you share it with somebody. Okay, okay. go ahead and start. An accountant answered an advertisement for a job with a large firm. At the end of the interview, the chairman said, One last question. What is 3 times 7? She, the, the accountant uh, thought for a minute and replied. I'm sorry, accountant thought uh, for a minute and uh, reply, replied. Uh, twen 22. 22. Okay, yeah, you got it. It's self corrected, but thought. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Jose, that's, that was good. You're, you're all right. Uh, okay, Jose, you want to finish it? Yes. Uh, outside, he, he took his calculator and realized that he, he should have saved 21. He concluded that he, he has lost the, the job. A uh, fortnight later, uh, however, he was offered the post. After a few weeks, he, he asked the, the chairman why he had been when he had given the round answer. You were the, you were the closest, the, the chairman replied. Yee. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Um, not not very good. Scary. My. Let's look at some of the vocabulary. An accountant. Okay. An accountant answered an advertisement. What is an accountant? My. Um, person who keeps money records. Um, yeah. It's a name of a person. It's a job. An accountant. A person. Right. Who keeps the money records? Right. Very good. Okay, and Heidi, uh, what is a firm? Or at least here, a firm has other meanings, but well, you guys for a job with a large firm. Well, yeah, job place. Or, um, yeah. Business company, yeah. Business company, that's right. A firm is another name for company. Of course, as an adjective, it means kind of hard, right? But uh, as a noun, it means uh, a business company, sure thing. Jose, who's a chairman? A chairman is a person who <laughs> sells or buys <laughs> chairs. <laughs> it's funny. Con controls a meeting, con answers phone calls. Yeah. Controls, controls a meeting. Usually controls a meeting. Also, chairman of the board can also be a title or position in a company, if you're the chairman of the board, well, you could basically, you could be called the owner, the president, chairman of the board, chief executive officer, uh, general manager, uh, who knows what, there's a lot of different ways that we title that, but basically a chairman of the board would be probably head of the company. And my, uh, what is a fortnight? He gets a call a fortnight later. Uh, two weeks. Very good. Excellent. Two weeks. Uh, exactly two weeks. Okay. Perfect. Uh, and Heidi, back to you. A point here. Mm -hmm. um, uh, D, let the part be the place. No. Uh, let's see. let's look in the sentence. I don't even remember what it said in the sentence. Where is it? I don't um, interview. Where is the point? Uh, appointment? No. Oh, is it appointment? A uh, point. <laughs> Where is the point? I don't even see a point here. 
a point. point. Earth, where is it? All right, it's not even here. How oh, funny. Maybe this <laughs> doesn't belong here. Uh, okay. Uh, no, a point. Right. No, a point. No, oh, it's just a point. A point for... to, the, to, the, to the person for a job. Yeah, right. Maybe it belongs here. It could have been here. Uh, he was appointed to the post uh, instead of he was offered the post. Well, there, I just... Right, a person chosen for a job. Okay. That was... <laughs> That was weird. Okay. Funny. Uh, all right. And, of course, what is the funny part of the story? Uh, let's see. Jose, why is um, this so silly? Uh, a silly kind of a story, really. <laughs> um, the... The account account should should know uh, about easy multiplication <laughs> uh, <laughs> and and he didn't he didn't know about it and he uh, um, and he he lost the the job and and later later the um, the the president um, call call him because uh, his uh, his multiplication um, was uh, was near about the result right. the result uh, was the closest <laughs> okay or the closest. Which, which, which means everybody else who applied for the job had a worse answer than than his, yeah, which is, mm. of course, totally ridiculous. Yeah. It is extremely important that an accountant be accurate, which is why it's kind of a ridiculous little story, because no one would ever want to hire a, uh, an accountant who couldn't multiply three times seven. That would not be good. Uh, mm. Okay. What do we got? Do we got another proverb here? Oh, I don't know. I don't. This is a new one. My, take a look at this one. A narrow mind has a broad tongue. What on earth does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> okay, uh, that's that's one I've never heard before. Uh, Heidi, any idea about this one? Mm, narrow mind is um. Kind of stupid person can, uh, can speak a lot. Ah, has a broad tongue, meaning they can speak a lot. Okay, kind of stupid person. Kind of. Uh, a narrow mind, uh, right, you're not... If somebody is narrow-minded, they are not open to new ideas. Okay, uh, narrow-minded or closed-minded are pretty much mean the same thing. Uh, okay, you're not open to new ideas. You think what you know is right, so you refuse to listen to any other ideas. So in a way, I guess you could say kind of stupid. Nobody knows everything, um, obviously. All right, and uh, okay, a broad tongue. Okay, broad is another word for wide uh, tongue, obviously, in your mouth. Okay. That kind of makes sense. Do you think? Uh, do you think narrow-minded people <laughs> talk more? Yeah, I think so. Do For example, they you ask something? Some students speak a lot, uh, kind of redundant, uh, repeated, long time. Then, mm, <laughs> some ability. About the English, there are um, comments very short, mm -hmm. like critical, okay. critical hit. <laughs> okay, well, critical thinking. Uh, okay. In any case, uh, my time has just about run out. So, I'd like to thank everyone for joining me today. Thank you very much. Hope you learned a thing or two. Um, great job.
And uh, I'll see you guys. I'll be back in three hours. Thank you, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank, thank you, you. Oh, Two hours. I'll be back in two hours. My, my bad. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank see you again, again. Bye-bye. See you.